Hollywood seems all glitz and glamour, but quite a few celebrities have referenced the underlying darkness that occurs behind the scenes. Here are the top 10 celebrities who have exposed dark Hollywood secrets. Jim Carrey, one of the biggest and highest paid actors of our time, has shared his thoughts on Hollywood since retiring from the spotlight. After the Chris Rock Will Smith Oscars slap incident, Carrey shared his opinions on the standing ovation Will Smith received when winning an Oscar later that night. Hollywood is just spineless and it really felt like it was a clear indication that we aren't the cool club anymore. Carrie went on to say that Smith should have been escorted from the Dolby Theater after slapping Rock for making an insensitive joke about his wife Jada Pinkett Smith. In March 2022, Carrie announced to Access Hollywood that he was probably retiring from acting. Well, I'm retiring. Yeah, probably. I'm being fairly serious, he shared. It depends. If the angels bring some sort of script that's written in gold ink that says to me that it's going to be really important for people to see, I might continue down the road, but I'm taking a break. Carrie added, I feel like, and this is something you might never hear another celebrity say as long as time exists, I have enough. I've done enough. I am enough. Our second celebrity is Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato starred in many Disney Channel movies and shows like Camp Rock, Princess Protection Program, and Sunny with a Chance. But on a podcast, Lovato shares she, as well as many of her co-stars, were subjected to harsh treatment and multiple strict rules and regulations while working for the company. She said, you can't be seen at a party with a red cup in your hand because it looks like you're drinking. There was this website called Ocean Up that would take all scandalous things that were happening to Disney actors and put it on there. So we lived in fear of that website. I didn't have food in my hotel room. They wouldn't let me eat the snacks in the mini bar. Then my security walked by my room and was made aware that they had barricaded me into my hotel room. They put furniture outside my door so that I couldn't get out and sneak out and eat if I wanted to. It was that level of controlling when it came to my food, which just made my eating troubles worse. She also stated that she felt that she was practically taking care of her own family. At a certain point, I was paying for the roof over my whole family's head and my dad had quit his job to become my manager so his income was coming right from me. My mom was a stay at home mom and there was just that pressure of I'm paying for everything and like I need to keep going because if things start to disappear so does the finances. Our next celeb on the list is Isla Fisher. The actress nearly drowned while filming a scene in Now You See Me. Fisher discussed what went wrong with the stunt and it is horrifying. I was in a tank of water. My character is submerged in a tank and piranhas are dropped on her head, she says. And whilst we were there, we shot it over three and a half days. Even though I had a quick release magnetic thing on my handcuffs, the chain that went between my ankles and my wrists was not able to be broken. And it got stuck underneath the slat and I was trapped. The actor also discussed the kill switch in the tank. There was a quick release switch that could have emptied the tank of water in 70 seconds. However, as a result of being tangled, Fisher was unable to reach for the switch. I was very scared and I was banging and saying, set me free. But everybody just thought I was doing fabulous acting. They thought I was being Meryl Streep in that tank. Actually, I was drowning. I guess Hollywood really wanted that good take. Our next celebrity is model Miranda V. The modeling world seems harmless, but darkness looms. Miranda accused Gigi and Bella Hadid's father of inappropriate physical behavior in a lengthy Instagram post in February 2018. Thank you, Kate Upton. It is time people like at Paul Marciano and Mohammed Hadid get exposed for who they really are. I met with Paul at his guest headquarters. That's actually an apartment. I thought it was a professional meeting, but it was just me, him, and Champagne, where he inappropriately touched me in an apartment. All to get a test shoot for guests. Former Disney Child star Allison Stoner exposes Hollywood with her new podcast and some of the claims are alarming. Allison said, I lost the ability to relate to non-famous experiences after the age of eight. 
Imagine on your 8th birthday you could never walk outside again without being stopped, asked for photos or followed unless you wore a disguise or brought security with you. Allison also mentioned the horror when they had to kiss both Dylan Sprouse and Cole Sprouse for an episode of The Sweet Life. The experience left them with conflicted feelings. Your character may have some arc or transformation that isn't evident upon reading the script of the first episode, Stoner explained. So writers and executives might decide to make your character do anything on the next episode and it's assumed that you're gonna agree to whatever is scripted. My first kiss and several of the times I experienced kissing all happened on camera. On camera. Was I ready for that? No. I felt young and uncomfortable, Stoner said, but they were already under contract and didn't want to appear difficult. Number five, the bet. Betting your friend to do something stupid is pretty fun, okay? It's pretty awesome, but betting your friend to do something to another person can be a little bit gross. Of course, in this case, the bet was made when Justin and his childhood friend Ryan Gosling were only 12 years old. The bet was to see who could kiss a certain lady first, and that lady was Jessica Simpson. As luck would have it, Jessica and Justin crossed paths a few times over the years and eventually sparked a romantic connection in 2006, following Simpson's split from Nick Lachey. During their brief romance, he recalls a time when she spied Justin texting someone moments after they had locked lips. To her, maybe she did a bad job or he was messaging another girl, something weird, but it turned out that he was just texting Ryan Gosling, Ken himself, to let him know that he had indeed lost a bet. She then admitted that she had a little bit of a crush on Ryan growing up and that Justin was lucky to have gotten there first. They of course broke up, but Jessica has very little to say in negative reference to Justin, so let's move on. Number four, The Social Network. Having just seen the film The Social Network this past week for like the tenth time, I understand where the star of the film Jesse Eisenberg is coming from. In The Social Network, Justin plays Sean Parker who's a real person who famously invented Napster and was then arrested and charged for a number of misdeeds only briefly covered in the movie. In the years that follow, Jesse Eisenberg has been fairly closed off about his time on set and why wouldn't he be Jesse Eisenberg? There are probably a million DC fans out there who are ready to just cave his face in at a moment's notice. However, when he is pressed about his time working on The Social Network, there is one one constant that Justin Timberlake did a great job. Now, when someone does an incredible job on set, that's usually a good thing, but not when the person they're playing is known to be a playboy with a penchant for the underage. While there is, of course, nothing tying Justin personally to that Sean Parker character, I do have to say, just after watching him in the role and everything that's going down in the past couple months, it's just a little bit scary how many times I forgot I was watching a movie. Number three. Wifey. Justin's current wife is no stranger to her husband being a pain in the neck. One night a few years back, Justin was spotted holding hands with his Palmer co-star, Alicia Wainwright, while he was still very much married to Jessica Biel. Of course, the internet being what it is, saw that this man was holding another woman's hand and they were like, oh, they must be a couple. He's definitely cheating on his wife. I'm sorry, but that is very silly, and if you saw that picture and assumed that, you are also silly. Justin was forced to release a public statement clarifying that he had in fact not done anything bad with his co-star at all, he had a bit too much no-no juice and wasn't paying attention to how he was behaving. He claims to have grown close to his co-star, but in more of a brother-sister kind of way. Jessica forgave him, but he continued to showcase a pattern of careless actions, and he has used offensive accents and language during interviews and even while on stage performing his music. Because Justin associates himself with rap a lot, he seems to think he's good to use slang and speak with an accent that just doesn't sound right coming out of his face. Jessica and Justin posted photos together for the hashtag Time's Up movement, and for those of you who might have forgotten, I did just mention it, so you shouldn't forgot. You shouldn't have forgot that. So just saying, bad move, J Dog. Number two, cut it out. Musician SZA had to deal with Justin in a very public way on the now cancelled Ellen DeGeneres show. SZA and Justin were brought onto the show to discuss a collaboration, but it seemed like whenever Ellen was trying to ask a question, Justin felt that it was necessary to give the answer. On top of that, he continuously calls her sis and speaks with what many people agree are stereotypical catchphrases and mannerisms usually linked to people of color. So many people took to Twitter following the interview to ask why he was talking like this and why he was talking over her so much. What is 
is with the voice. And if this man calls her sis one more time, people did not know what they were going to do. He was accused of cultural appropriation, only speaking this way when SZA was there, but as a lot of people know, he doesn't tend to speak with any specific mannerisms. The interview was uncomfortable and it clearly started some tension between these two. And at number one, the court jester. In doing research for this video, I found over like 20 examples of Justin Timberlake making a fool of himself in public. He pretended to be Prince at a Golden Globes one year and crouched down to five foot two and did a busted impression of him. Not a good move. He has a pension for impressions though, as he also did this to Rihanna's mother as he accepted his American Music Award for Best Male Soul R&B Singer. He doesn't research the names of other things before he uses them, like the Take Back the Night situation and the anti-mistreatment organization thing. He literally paid someone to pretend to be Britney and crash a car on camera for his music video to what goes around comes around. Some Hollywood families are hiding dark secrets they try to keep hidden, but we are here to expose some of those secrets. First off, we have the Kardashian family, perhaps the most famous Hollywood family. The Kardashians have built a successful billion dollar empire, but secrets have recently been exposed about how they allegedly achieved that success. While the Kardashian Jenner family already had immense notoriety from Caitlyn Jenner's Olympic status and Kim Kardashian's career as a stylist for Paris Hilton, the leak of Kim's explicit tape put them in the limelight and caught the public's attention. Fans speculated that Kim's mother, Kris Jenner, was actually at the center of that whole tape controversy, releasing the tape in order to gain fame. Ray J added fuel to the fire in 2022 when, during an Instagram Live, he made the same assertion and even claimed that Chris picked which version of the tape to release. Wow. Chris Jenner denied these claims. Chris is also being accused of starting her own church as a way to write off taxes. Biblically, it's customary to give 10% of earnings back to the church, a practice known as tithing. Is it a coincidence that 10% is also the cut that momager Chris takes of her children's earnings? Now, Chris Jenner and her church have been accused of being simply a tax write-off for the Kardashian family. In 2011, Kim K told Piers Morgan that she faithfully gives 10% to the church every single year, which is what she was taught, she says. Therefore, Kardash the Kardashians might be reducing their own taxable income and giving money to their mom, Kris Jenner, as the co-founder of that church in the process. Also, there's more. The church allegedly has a monthly 1,000 US dollars membership fee, which may mean even more money into their pockets. Our next family is the Cyrus family. The mother of Miley Cyrus, 56, is at the center of shock claims that she stole Dominic Purcell from her daughter, Noah, who was said to be seeing the man when Tish began to pursue him. The Cyruses have been ripped apart by a mysterious feud over the last few years, and now we know why. Allegedly, the reason is Tish's relationship with Dominic, her now husband. The turmoil between Noah and her mom, Tish, goes far beyond what people think. Noah is very distraught over Tish stealing Dominic from her, a close source has said. Another celebrity family hiding a dark secret is the Duggar family. Popular on TLC for their hit show, 19 Kids and Counting, the Duggars followed a strict religious upbringing that captivated fans across the globe. No kissing until marriage, girls can only wear skirts and not pants, and men must be the providers were some of the family's values. But behind the happy facade, a darkness was looming. Josh Duggar, the oldest Duggar sibling, resigned from his high up job in 2015 after he was exposed for having inappropriately touched multiple females, including four of his own siblings. These revelations led to the cancellation of 19 kids and counting on July 16th, 2015. The consequent fallout was named one of the 10 big scandals of 2015 by USA Today, and the Washington Post listed Duggar as one of the 15 most hated people on the internet. On April 29th, 2021, Duggar was arrested by U.S. Marshals on charges of receiving and possessing inappropriate videos. He was found guilty on all charges on December 9th, 2021, and he was sentenced to more than 12 years in prison on May 25th, 2022. Our next family is a family YouTube channel that went down in complete flames recently. The channel was called Eight Passengers, and the mom, Ruby Frankie is now serving up to 15 years in prison for her crimes. Beginning in 2020, when one of the Frankie children
children said that he had been banned from his bedroom and made to sleep on a beanbag for seven months, viewers became concerned about his mother's disciplinary methods. The mom had also said extremely vile things during her vlogs, and that kept going on for years and years. Eventually, a change.org petition was made to stop the mom from doing these horrible things. The Frankie parents posted in defense of that discipline, saying that the incidents had always been taken out of context. But on February 20th, 2024, Frankie received four consecutive sentences of between one and 15 years imprisonment, with the exact term that she will serve to be decided by the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole. At number five, we have how she didn't want to be a bad mother. No parent wants to hear that they failed or that they didn't do enough, or their actions caused their child to grow up the way they did. So because of this, both Felicity and William tried to raise their girls out of the media's eye, which is what we know is probably for the best, considering some children of famous people who grow up being famous are a little out of touch with reality. William said in an interview that when Felicity found out she was pregnant, she tried to gain all the knowledge she could about parenting through books, and would read stacks of different parenting books in order to do her best as a mother. Their oldest daughter, Sophia, wanted to follow in her parents' footsteps, and is becoming an actress herself, but not without a hand lent by her mother which I'll get into later. Both Felicity and William are super supportive of her and say that she's a talented actress. So we hope that success will come her way when she graduates from college, even if her entry was paved smoother than others. At number four, we have how she didn't win an award for American Crime. For some background knowledge, American Crime is a crime drama TV show that had three seasons, with Felicity being one of the lead roles in all three seasons. The main cast play a different role each season, but are ultimately all connected together, centered around the crime of the season. Well, the show was a hit, with the first two seasons scoring 95% Rotten Tomatoes, and the third season scoring a whopping 100%. The first season was nominated for 27 awards, the second season was nominated for 11 awards, and the third season was nominated for two awards. She alone was nominated for eight of those awards, but she didn't win a solo award. And the entire main cast won a satellite award for being the best television ensemble cast. So you can bet she was a little upset at the fact that she was constantly nominated, but never quite good enough to win. At number three, we have Transmerica. The movie received well with critics, but was a lot to take in for some fans. It's got a very long and complicated plotline that makes no sense in some places. And one of the places that left some fans disappointed was that Felicity played a trans female character. It was also widely disregarded because it was released in 2005, and people weren't nearly as open to the movie concept as they would be now. But people thought that Felicity's character should have been played by an actual trans woman who would have had a more genuine genuine understanding of the character, and what the character goes through throughout the movie. The movie was originally created for a film festival, so it never saw theaters, and it was rated a 6.8 out of 10, according to 145 people. However, she did win a Golden Globe for her performance, and critics thought it was a great movie, considering it won 12 awards at a few different award ceremonies. But with how fast the world changes and how quickly Hollywood's gaze changes, it's still overlooked. At number two, we have how she is practically invisible in today's world. While she had a steady career, her name is only known because of the scandal she participated in a few years ago. Even if she won a handful of awards, she was never in anything monumental enough to be acknowledged by the modern world, or to be remembered as an important character of film history. While being married to a famous actor as well helps with her relevance, it's not working as well as some may think. She has gone back to stage acting, which isn't nearly widely appreciated is acting on screen, so she's going backward rather than forward in her career. But at least she's still trying, right? This proves that even if your star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you aren't always relevant to Hollywood. And last but not least at number one, we have the Varsity Blues scandal. The point most of you have been waiting for since she just came forward and talked about it for the first time since it happened. And there have been a lot of different reactions. The Sparks Note version of what happened is her daughter Sophia, the one I mentioned before who's in school for acting. Well, well, her practice SAT scores were subpar, so Felicity paid someone $15,000 to improve her score enough 
for her to be accepted into the college she's still attending. Felicity claimed she had no choice but to break the law for her daughter to pursue her dream. And she wasn't the only one who was caught during the scandal. Rich parents have been doing it for years, but the fact that she claimed she saw no other option for her daughter if she didn't, and how she wanted her to have a chance at a future, as if she couldn't study harder or work harder like most American students. She even went as far to say that when the FBI entered her mansion and woke up her and her daughters, she thought it was a joke until she was put in handcuffs. She was in jail for 11 days before being released. This just proves how far famous parents will go to make sure their child comes out on top, which we have seen a lot in celebrities. Hailey Bieber and her family have gone through a lot of drama. First off, we have those racial tweets Hailey posted 10 plus years ago that came to the surface recently. In 2019, Hailey Bieber found herself at the center of a scandal when some of her old tweets resurfaced. Bieber was called out for posting some seemingly racist statements, which she has since deleted. In one post from January 2012, Bieber allegedly wrote, shut up before I smack you back to your own country. In another tweet posted in November 2013, Bieber reportedly wrote, to those foreigners who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, so sorry your country didn't have pilgrims to start such a sick holiday. Understandably, Bieber faced a slew of backlash for posting such problematic messages, with one user on X creating a thread to highlight some of the model's most egregious posts. The thread even highlighted Bieber's alleged use of multiple racial slurs, suggesting that her online activities had been highly, highly offensive in the past. Next, let's discuss Haley allegedly bullying a classmate in school. Having grown up as the daughter of movie star Stephen Baldwin, Haley Bieber has likely experienced immense privilege throughout her life. As a celebrity herself, Bieber's character has been called into question on several occasions with one critic suggesting the model was not very nice in middle school. According to a since deleted video, TikTok user Kimona Elizabeth posted, Think you can hurt me? Hailey Bieber was my middle school bully, she says. Elizabeth started a follow up video in which she elaborated on her claim. I was in fifth grade, Elizabeth explained. Hailey was in sixth. She bullied me. Middle school is full of kids who are either the bullies or the bullied. Unfortunately, I was the bullied, and for that year, Haley was my bully. However, Elizabeth didn't seem to hold a particular grudge against Justin Bieber's wife. Still, it's curious to find out that she may have had some shady interactions with some of her classmates when she was younger. Haley's uncle, Alec Baldwin, got in some serious trouble in 2021 on a movie set. On October 21st, 2021, at the Bonanza Creek Ranch in Bonanza City, New Mexico, cinema cinematographer Helena Hutchins was fatally wounded, and director Joel Souza was also injured on the set of the film Rust. And a live round was discharged from a revolver used as a prop by actor Alec Baldwin. The sad and accidental death prompted a discourse on occupational safety in the film industry, the treatment of its employees, and also the use of real guns as props. In 2011, Alec was kicked off an American Airlines flight after he refused to turn off his cell phone when crew members asked him to. The actor shared via X that he had been playing words with friends when the incident occurred. Flight attendant on American reamed me out for playing words with friends while we sat at the gate not moving. Hashtag no wonder American Air is bankrupt, he wrote on X. But oddly, 30 Rock plays in flight on American. Hashtag there's always united. Wow. A statement posted to the American Airlines Facebook page read, The passenger was extremely rude to the crew, calling them inappropriate names and using offensive language. After his removal from the plane, Alec continued his journey on a later American Airlines flight. Now on the 3 o'clock American flight, he says on, on X, The flight attendants already look smarter. Wow. In November 2013, TMZ caught Alec, Haley's uncle, on video using a homophobic slur during an argument with a photographer. I apologize and I will retire the slur from my vocabulary, he wrote via X. His MSNBC interview show, Up Late, was cancelled less than two weeks later. Only five episodes of the show had aired up to that 
point. Now, back to Haley. Fans think Haley was obsessed with Selena Gomez and Justin's past relationship after some old tweets were resurfaced. I don't care what anybody says, but Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez together is the definition of a teenage dream. Hashtag word, one of her tweets read. Another read, she is beyond flawless. And he's, you know, he's Bieber. They are the perfect relationship, and I'm forever alone. Fans think it's borderline creepy that Haley made these tweets and then years later married Justin. Number five, Jada Pinkett Smith. Cheating rumors and dating scandals followed Jada and Will throughout their entire relationship. Since day one, people were convinced that they were in an open relationship or had just been straight up cheating on each other. Turns out that those rumors were kind of true, because ahead of the release of her book, Worthy, Jada sat down with People Magazine and every other news outlet to share some inside info. The most revealing one was that herself and Will Smith were actually separated for seven years. Of course, that's not all though. Jada is slowly ruining that guy's life and then some. When Jada revealed the truth about her separation from Will, she claimed that by the time they reached 2016, they just became exhausted with each other. The news of their separation was a mild shock at best because super sleuth fans claim that they had proof Will and Jada were separated a long time ago. Some of the clips that were submitted as evidence of Will and Jada just prove it because Will and Jada was on Red Table Talk and he looks drained. He just looks like a man dealing with so much mentally speaking. In her conversation with Will, she literally says that herself and Will had basically broken up, but instead of just outright admitting the information, she decided to hold on to it until the release of her book. A lot of Jada fans commented on the resurfaced clips, and we can all agree just Will is having a rough time, and I, I just feel for this guy at this point. I could go on and on about how terrible Jada Pinkett Smith is, but I've only got a couple of minutes, and I already wrote a lot of lists about why she's bad, so go check him out. Number four, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch hit the rap scene in 1991. Despite sounding like the title of a cheesy kids cartoon, the crew had a small following and garnered quite a bit of success. Enough for leading man Mark Wahlberg to be spotted, picked up by Hollywood to star in The Corrupter, a 1999 action flick that sees Mark play the leading man, Danny Wallace, a police officer who attempts to stop substance trafficking and corruption by the Chinese triads. He had a successful acting career that's recently been declining in quality, but he's still acting and he looks great at 52, so please don't don't hurt me, Mark Wahlberg. Growing up in Boston, he was the youngest of nine children and was relentlessly bullied by his fellow siblings. His parents divorced when he was very young and he became addicted to No No Snow by the time he was 13. He dropped out of high school and was eventually arrested at the age of 18 for attempting to slay two Vietnamese men. Apparently, he was walking home late one night under the influence of hallucinogens when he spotted the men. Close friends at the time confirmed that Mark did have a bit of a racial bias with his upbringing, which caused him to be instantly aggressive towards anyone who, you know, wasn't white. He attempted to swing a large log at them, which made contact and knocked one of them unconscious. He was eventually released after serving only 45 days of a two-year prison sentence, and he vowed to change his life forever. So far, that promise seems to be kept, and I can personally confirm that he's a very polite and patient person because he watched a movie at a theater I used to work at. He travels with like five people at all times. It's a little intimidating. Number three, Margot Robbie. Margot may be a perfect Barbie on screen, but apparently behind the scenes, she may be a psycho. In a recent interview with BBC Radio 1, Margot reminisced about a little prank she pulled on an old babysitter. It involved kitchen cutters, which is the word I'm forced to use for no See, they bleep it out. Apparently, Margot has just gotten a new babysitter, a much older woman that just was not as cool as Talia, her old babysitter, so she hatched a plan of sweet, sweet revenge. After a particularly trying day where Margot refused to take a bath, she decided to kick the old lady out for good and grabbed ketchup, a stabby jabby device, and laid face down on the kitchen tiles. You know, the old I'm kind of dead routine. As you may expect, her babysitter walked in, took one look, screamed, and just jogged out the door. She was gone. She traumatized the woman who quit, and Margot successfully got her old babysitter back. But that's very messed up, and Margot was so young when she did that. That is so dark. A dark place for someone's mind to go that early on. Was she secretly a little crazy this whole time? Might explain why she is the best Harley Quinn we've ever seen on screen. Number two, Tim Allen. Tim Allen is the voice of Buzz Lightyear, the star of ABC's popular sitcom Home Improvement, which premiered in 1991. And while he may have played a family man on TV, a lot of fans may not know that Tim 
was a smuggler of no-no snow in the early 1970s. According to Tim, he got mixed up with some pretty bad people back in the day while he was selling certain substances on the street for a couple of bucks. In 1978, Tim was arrested in the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport and was caught with more than 650 grams, 1.4 pounds, of no-no snow. Unfortunately for Tim, state legislators had just passed a law that tied a life sentence to any conviction of selling 650 grams or more. Like there was a guy from the government just next to his car like, oh, 650, all right, well, if you got 650, then you're going to jail. However, that sentence was never served and it was revealed that Tim was set up by an undercover police officer who had been following him for months. Due to this and Tim's cooperation in providing the names of fellow dealers to the authorities, it led to him receiving a lighter conviction that allowed him to be sentenced in a federal court instead of a state one, so he was able to ignore that new policy. His information led to 20 arrests and the sentencing of a major dealer. So think about this entire entry and tell me that wouldn't be a great movie. Number one, Danny Matheson. Danny Matheson was that 70s show's popular boy and it helped launch several careers, including Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher, and of course himself. Danny was also on this show and it turns out the allegations against him date back to 2004 and were reported in 2004. Danny was still on the show when an investigation took place. Four women reported that he had mistreated them physically, prompting local law enforcement to halt production of that 70s show and bring Danny in for questioning. The investigation brought little to no actual evidence to the table because it was just that time, so Danny was let go and the whole thing was forgotten about. But that means that Ashton and Mila watched this dude shut down their project and still said, hey, he's a great guy. When the charges come up again 15 years later, people are still sticking to his side that he was friends with, but it turns out that he was an actual menace and a horrible person and he's gonna go to jail. Jennifer Lopez's new documentary is getting some mixed reviews, some believing she exposed too much of her personal life with Ben Affleck. First off, we see Ben talk about how he felt exposed after Jennifer shared a private book of their emails and letters. 20 years ago, I fell in love with the love of my life and during that time I was making an album called This Is Me Then, Lopez is heard telling a crowd in the documentary. I hadn't made an album since then. Years later, Later, we got back together and I was very inspired. The inspiration came after her quote Bible she calls it which was the book Affleck gave her on their first Christmas together. It is every letter and every email that we wrote to each other from 20 years ago to today, she says, sharing that he titled the quote Bible, The Greatest Love Story Never Told by Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, 2001 to 2021 and counting. Lopez placed the book in the studio and let her collaborators go through it for song inspiration. To Ben's surprise, Ben appears shocked and surprised to find out that Lopez shared this private book he gave her with everyone in the studio. When and talking to the artist working with Jennifer Lopez, Affleck discovers that they gave him a nickname. I was like, you've been showing all the musicians these letters, Affleck says in the documentary, and they were like, yeah, we call you Pen Affleck. And I was like, oh my God. In the documentary, we also learned that Ben had some serious reservations of his love story being shared so publicly. I did really find the beauty and the poetry and the irony in the fact that it's the greatest love story never told, he tells the cameras. And if you're making a record about it, that seems kind of like you're telling it. In another scene, Affleck expresses how it was an adjustment for him to have her share their private life with the entire world. Jen was really inspired by this experience, which is how artists do their work, he says. I certainly do the same things, but things that are private, I have always felt are sacred and special because in part, they're private. So this was something of an adjustment for me. Ultimately, Ben comes to terms with Lopez's project after realizing it's not all about their relationship. I don't really love being in the making of a documentary about my personal life, which is why I'm so relieved that I'm not really, well, it seems like I might be in this, but I'm not really, he says, I was worrying for no reason. The movie wasn't about me. It was about the ability to love yourself and that love story is a lot effing harder to find than Prince Charming. Next, we learned Ben had to make compromises when they got back together. Getting back together, I said, listen, one of the things I don't want is a relationship on social media, Ben says. Then I sort of realized it's not a fair thing to ask her. It's sort of like, you're gonna marry a boat captain and you're like, well, I don't like the water. He added, we're just two people with kind of different approaches trying to learn to compromise.
Next, we learned in the documentary that some A-list stars declined to be in the movie musical about her life that accompanies the documentary. In the documentary, Lopez reveals Anthony Ramos, the In the Heights star, was offered the role of her significant other in the rebound scene of the movie. The movie. He was going to do the rebound number with me and the glass house, she tells wardrobe supervisor Sean Barton during rehearsals, and he was like, uh, I'm friends with Mark Anthony. Lopez was married to Mark Anthony from 2000 to 2014, and the pair share 16-year-old twins. The rebound scene that Anthony was supposed to be in shows Lopez in a toxic relationship with a drunken partner. The singer, however, never specifically mentions who the song and scene is about. We also see Jennifer crying about a past relationship and how it negatively impacted her self-esteem. She gets emotional as she recalls a relationship in which she says she was, quote, manhandled before she hit rock bottom and realized it was time to get out. Though she doesn't name the ex, singer and actress speaks candidly through tears about the experience and how it affected her going forward. Being thrown around and manhandled is not fun, she explains. I was never in a relationship where I got beat up, thank God, but I've definitely been manhandled in a couple of other unsavory things. Jen doesn't reveal who treated her that way, but her long career in showbiz has involved plenty of high-profile relationship in addition to her marriage now to Ben Affleck. Next up, we have Doja Cat family. Doja's mom claimed that her son had given her daughter cuts and bruises and even went as far as knocking out Doja's teeth, which resulted in Doja feeling, quote, unsafe and traumatized. Raman, Doja's brother, has destroyed and stolen property, the initial filing stated. He has verbally harmed Doja Cat in a very degrading and demeaning manner. He has made her feel unsafe and traumatized. Deborah, Doja's mom, also accused her son of physically violent going as far as threatening her multiple times over the past year. I need these orders to protect the physical and emotional well-being of all parties listed. The initial petition filed by Deborah Sawyer, Doja's mom, stated, I am not only worried and fearful of, of physically violent episodes, but the tremendous mental and emotional damage that is done. A judge ruled temporary protection for Deborah against her 30-year-old son until a hearing for a permanent restraining order could happen. Next up, we have Sophia Vergara. Sofia Vergara has had a long, successful career. It all started when she was discovered by a photographer while walking on a beach in her native country of Colombia. Since then, the knockout actress has proven her beauty is only a small section of her talents, with a leading part on the long-running sitcom Modern Family, in addition to several other high-profile acting roles like the recent Griselda on Netflix. Unfortunately, some of her close family still struggles with their own demons. Sophia has a younger brother named Julio who has lived with addiction for many years, resulting in many run-ins with the law. In 2011, this ultimately resulted in Julio being deported back to Colombia. When speaking about her younger sibling, Vergara said, to see somebody passing over 10 years little by little, that's the worst punishment. Now he's like another person. It is sad to hear this, but it should serve as a reminder to everybody that fame and celebrity does not automatically make one's life rosy. This is not the first familial tragedy Sophia has lived through. Her older brother met his tragic end in 1989 after a botched kidnapping attempt. As unfortunate as it is to hear these tales about Sophia's family, it's good to see that she has managed to make something special from her life and find her own success. Next up, we have Rihanna. Throughout her childhood, her father had struggles with addiction. This resulted in the deterioration of her parents' marriage. Additionally, her father's philandering ways gave Rihanna several half-siblings from many different women. Though these actions would understandably put a strain on the relationship, it appears Rihanna and her dad do get along great these days. A couple of years ago, Rihanna bought a mansion in Barbados worth more than $1 million just for him. She also paid for her father to receive top quality medical treatment for an injury sustained in a severe car accident. Next up, we have the Depp family. John Johnny Depp was investigated by the LAPD and the Department of Family Services for allowing his daughter, Lily Rose, to live with her a lot older boyfriend next door. No charges were filed.
filed and Depp has never publicly responded to these allegations, though the witness in the documents testified they felt Johnny had made false statements in order for the charges not to be filed. Next up, we have the Hilton family. Paris Hilton exposed her parents for sending her to a troubled school for girls when she was younger. The school had been accused of doing some terrible things to their students by Paris after she came forward to talk about the things she endured while she was there, calling it, quote, the worst of the worst. Paris said that the students were just sitting and staring at walls all day, getting yelled at and even more horrible things. Paris also claimed that while attending the school, she and her friends were given mystery pills and when they refused to take them, they were sent to solitary confinement for up to 20 hours. She said that a lot of the people who worked there enjoyed this harm. Paris, who was in that facility for 11 months, said that she wanted to get out so badly and that she vowed she would be so successful that her parents would never be able to control her or send her back to the facility again. She still suffers from recurring nightmares because of what she experienced in that school. Lastly, we have the royal family. Although there are many controversies with this family, let's center on Princess Diana. From the start, the relationship between Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, and Diana, Princess of Wales, had been strained. But after the couple separated in 1992, Charles and Diana began to publicly trade barbs about one another's infidelities. Diana famously told an astounded global audience that, quote, there were three in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. The Crown Season 5 trailer shows just how dramatic the moment felt for viewers around the world. The ugliness ended abruptly in 1997 when, unfortunately, Diana was killed in a car crash in Paris. Charles went on to marry Camilla, the third in the marriage of whom Diana spoke. Besides her rocky relationship, there are many conspiracies about her death. Many believing the queen orchestrated this deadly car crash on purpose as Diana was too controversial. Another celeb that has exposed Hollywood is Selena Gomez, the superstar who boasts 430 million followers on Instagram, often speaks about the downside of being famous. Famous, telling Interview Magazine in 2020 that everything she does causes a reaction, saying, The sad part is, I don't remember a time when that wasn't the case. What has kept me afloat is that I know eventually it'll be somebody else. And I don't mean that in a negative way. She said, adding that fame has still allowed her to talk about things that are important to her. A huge part of why I have a platform is to help people. That's why I think I'm okay with the magnitude. I mean, I'm not really okay with it, but I'm gonna say that I am because it's worth it. Perhaps the celebrity with the most famous Hollywood horror story is Miss Britney Spears. In 2008, Jamie Spears, her dad, was granted the conservatorship after Britney reportedly struggled with mental health issues and was hospitalized. After after Britney was released, a Los Angeles court made the conservatorship permanent, giving her father power over all her finances and her medical decisions. Although Britney was an adult at the time, she was treated like a prisoner and says she was not allowed to leave her house unless granted permission. Her father was making more money than her because he was taking a huge percentage of her earnings and not telling her. Wow, what a father he is. The greed of Hollywood doesn't stop there though. Scientology, a popular organization in Hollywood, has been known to take insane amounts of money from its members, claiming the payments will get them into a higher level in the afterlife. Actress Leah Remini, a former Scientologist, exposes the organization for the way they ruined her life after she left. The actress, who was brought into the church as an eight-year-old after her mother converted to the religion, slammed the organization for its alleged scare tactics and seemingly helping certain members of avoid jail for various horrible crimes. Leah met famous Scientologist slash actor Tom Cruise while still in the organization, but had to pay $1 million to do so which she paid. After leaving, Leah sued the organization for alleged stalking and hacking. She states she reportedly had cars chasing her and following her every single day and had hackers hack into her bank account and steal thousands of dollars all because she left the organization. Yikes. Not all Hollywood drama comes from Hollywood though. 
And this was the case for Kim Kardashian in Paris. In October 2016, while on a work trip to Paris, Kardashian was robbed at 3 a.m. while alone in her hotel. She was tied up and blindfolded while men in masks raided the hotel room for money. In the end, $10 million worth of jewelry was stolen as well as two cell phones. Kim's sisters and bodyguards were at the club while everything took place and Kim decided to stay home because she was tired. Boy, was that a life-changing mistake. Kim recalled the fear that she felt during a conversation with the concierge, who was also held hostage in that moment. She says to the concierge, I'm like, what is happening? Are we gonna die? Just tell them I have children. I have babies, I have a husband, I have a family. Like I have to get home, tell them, take anything you want. Two French judges later charged 12 people in relation to that robbery. Kardashian, who shares four kids with ex Kanye West, has said that she almost lost herself in the year following the crime. Explaining on the Alec Baldwin show in 2018, I was never depressed, but I wasn't motivated to get up and work like I used to. It shook me. However, the reality star also shared that she has learned to feel grateful for the experience in a way. There was a lot of me that measured who I was by how much I had. I thought, oh, I'm worth so much, she noted. That needed to change in me. Our final celebrity of the day is Miley Cyrus. Although Hannah Montana was a family friendly show, starring in it gave Miley an identity crisis, she says. I had gone from being a character almost as often as I was myself. And actually, the concept of the show is that when you're this character, when you have this alter ego, you're valuable. You've got millions of fans, you're the biggest star in the world. And then the concept was that when I looked like myself, when I didn't have the wig on anymore, nobody cared about me. I wasn't a star anymore. So that was drilled into my head, Cyrus explained. I really had to break that, and I think that's maybe why I almost created a characterized version of myself at times, in the way of being aware of how other people see me. I never created a character where it wasn't me, but I was aware of how people saw me, and I maybe played into it a little bit, Cyrus continued. Speaking of her persona after, Cyrus has also talked about how the costumes and makeup took their toll on her, likely causing some body dysmorphia. I'm this fragile little girl playing a 16 year old in a wig and a ton of makeup. It was like toddlers and tiaras. She said that being made to look like somebody she wasn't and made pretty for so many years meant that when it ended, she didn't know who she was. Number 10, Justin Timberlake. One of the most discussed sections of The Woman in Me, a memoir by Britney Spears, is of course a revelation on what really happened while she was dating her Mickey Mouse Club co-star, Justin Timberlake. After meeting JT in the clubhouse, the two sparked a romantic connection Connection, and their connection was strong, but unfortunately, Britney had to make a terrible decision in the year 2000 when she found out she was pregnant. And at first, she was very excited about the whole thing because she wanted to be a parent. In her book, she revealed that she had planned on starting a family with Justin, but I guess it was just going to be a little bit earlier than she expected. Well, it turns out Justin, not so excited, and told her that they were both too young to start a family, continuing to remind her that their careers would also need to be put on pause. This revelation may be part of the reason that Justin. Justin reportedly was so nervous leading up to the book's release, and since the book's release, he's had to turn off his Instagram notifications because, hey, he's terrible and people want to let him know. Brittany revealed that if the decision had solely been left to her, she would have gone through with the pregnancy, but she decided to go the opposite route instead. She claims that she only did this because Justin clearly didn't want to be the dad, and in the book, she said that looking back, it was one of the most agonizing things she had ever experienced in her life. Number nine, Jamie Foxx. So this is one of the more recent secrets that's been revealed, so to speak. Uh, so far, this is just an allegation, but a woman is suing Jamie Foxx for alleged physical mistreatment at a rooftop restaurant. The allegations are being backed up by a two eyewitnesses, a friend of the victim, and a security guard who saw the whole thing go down and let it happen. According to the unnamed woman, she spotted Jamie at a restaurant around 11 p.m. and after a couple of hours decided to ask him for a picture. Jamie was apparently under the influence and according to the accuser, he became very handsy as the night progressed. He said yes to the picture and then apparently said that the woman had a model's body and smelled good. Then there are some darker and honestly pretty disturbing details that I can't go into in this channel, but if they're true, something tells me Jamie's career may be done. Truly just dark stuff. The court case is being brought forward as the Survivors Act is about to be implemented in the US. This act allows victims of physical offenses to bring civil cases to court after the statute of limitations 
limitations has expired. The statute means that after a certain amount of time has passed, the victim can no longer file criminal charges. However, the new act means that civil cases are good to go. So we will see what happens to Jamie in the coming weeks. Number eight. Lizzo. Lizzo may have been a public advocate for body positivity, but as part of the lawsuit being brought up against her, it looks like all that positivity may have just been an act that she was putting on to make herself more universally loved. Now, I'm not a small man. In fact, I have what many call a dad bod, and I'm very cool with it. So I'm not dismissing the notion that we should love and respect ourselves, but come on, she made it a massive part of her personality on camera when it sounds like the only body she actually cared about was her own. According to her dancers, Lizzo regularly shames her team and makes them feel that they are too large or gaining weight, with several dancers confirming these claims. One of the dancers, Crystal Davies, who is part of this lawsuit, was fired for secretly recording a meeting between herself and Lizzo. The meeting was about the dancer's performance on stage recently and her apparently disliking the weight that she had been gaining, claiming that she wasn't committing to the role. She was also bringing her dancers to weird places and making them do weird things. Lizzo was at a club in Amsterdam's Red Light District when she coerced, aka forced a dancer to touch a woman's bare chest despite saying no several times. She also made them eat bananas from some no-no zones. Again, nobody's idea of fun. Currently, there is still a court case up in the air and no one knows what will happen, but so far Lizzo is maintaining that she did nothing and will prove her innocence. Number seven, Russell Brand. Even before the controversy surrounding Russell Brand came up this year, this dude was unwelcome everywhere. Royal events, awards shows, kids birthday parties, who knows? For anyone who doesn't know, I'm really sorry to be the one to tell you, but Russell Brand is a terrible person. The man known best as a comedian, a bringer of joy, was secretly manipulative, aggressive, and at times violent with his ex-partners. Following in the news that a documentary about his life and career was set to release on BBC's Channel 4, several complaints got filed against him, alleging mistreatment during their time together. The allegations were actually reinforced by Russell's ex, Katy Perry, who they dated for quite some time, and she came to learn that Russell was short-tempered, opinionated, and stubborn. Russell's career was canceled, and he's currently awaiting a trial. Number six, Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors is currently the man behind Kang the Conqueror in the MCU. He was written as an important person in that franchise, being a villain in a couple of movies and recently a villain in the Loki TV show. Unfortunately for Jonathan Majors, an ex has come forward and alleged that Jonathan was physically violent towards her while they were together. Since March of this year, Majors and his team had been adamant that the situation was blown out of proportions and that there really is nothing to be upset about, which is always a fun thing to say to people during these situations. In fact, in June, Majors filed his own cross-complaint accusing his accuser. The prosecutors refuted these claims and told him they had no plans on prosecuting Grace Jafari, who was the woman who accused him. Majors has been dropped from his agency, and so far, his role on TV and film is pretty up in the air. I mean, his character Kang may even be kicked out of the MCU and replaced by Doctor Doom, so let's see what happens as the year progresses. At number 10, we have how she felt about Desperate Housewives. While she enjoyed working on the set and had a great time with the cast and crew, it dominated her career, and she wanted to be known for something other than Desperate Housewives. In a nutshell, the show was about how one of the housewives who passed saw her friends, saw the world, and saw her personal experiences. But over the span of the 15 years the show took place, they gradually learn about the dark and hidden things about the other women, and what they are hiding behind their white picket fences. The show had eight seasons in total, and won many awards and accolades, and Felicity even won an award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. So why would she want to break away from all that? Well, after the success of the show, she had a hard time landing roles that matched the success of the show. She she has many IMDb credits, but all of them were either small roles or not blockbuster hits, which had to have put a dent in her confidence. This brings us to the next point. At number 9, we have how she's overshadowed by her husband. She dated and is now married to William H. Macy, and they have two daughters together. But with his decades of success, his most notable role being in Shameless, it's safe to say that people would recognize him first if they're out in public together. 
15 years is a long time to be with someone, especially when it comes to Hollywood. He even helped her land some of the roles in some of the movies he was in as well, which led them to both earn their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2012. It's good for them that they can actively work together, and it's important to be supportive of one another. But there is a definite success gap between the two of them, married or not. It could be the fact that Felicity was just never cut out for bigger roles, but as long as she is happy with where her career has gotten her, that's what counts. At number eight, we have how she's a Nepo baby. Now, it wasn't that she was born into a famous family, but she was born into a wealthy family, with her presumed father being a partner at Morgan Stanley. One of her grandfathers was the founder of the Peter Cartridge Company, a Baptist minister and an author, and her great-grandfather was a St. Louis businessman. Because of the family wealth, she attended a private school along with her six other siblings, and attended a New York University and an art school in London. This is what led her to have a state career before reaching the big screen, but we'll get more into that later. While she hasn't directly been labeled a Nepo baby, she insists her success came from her auditions and her natural acting talent, rather than the fact that her parents paid for her to have such a prestigious acting education. At number seven, we have how she started as a stage performer. As I mentioned before, she did study acting and began acting in theater, as a lot of actors do. She's acted in 17 different stage productions, with most of them actually being in New York. She also continued to star in stage productions up until 2015, while taking breaks in between to star on screen. She hasn't said anything about her progression from theater to television, so we don't have a good inside look at how she managed the transition or how she handled it. But with her having numerous lead roles, it's safe to say that her stage acting paid off enough for her to become a television actor, even if they were only small roles in small movies. At number six, we have her trying to be a parent. It's not easy to be a parent. And it makes it even harder when both you and your husband are regularly working individuals whose entire livelihood is based on landing roles. In the year 2000, she had her first daughter, and in 2002, they welcomed their second daughter. However, when Sophia, her eldest, was born, she felt like she wasn't fit for motherhood, and that she just kept making mistake after mistake while being sleep deprived. She starred in Door to Door in 2002, and has been acting regularly since then, starring in Christmas with the Cranks, Transmerica, Raising Helen, and Phoebe's Wonderland, to name some of the bigger ones. This couldn't have been easy with two young daughters at home. While acting seems to run in the family, considering one of her daughters is currently in school for acting, but it wasn't always sunshine. This brings me to the next point. In 2023, TikTok blew up after the Kylie Jenner, Selena Gomez, and Hailey Bieber scandal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. Selena was photographed in a bikini, which indicated she had gained weight, but of course still looked gorgeous. But the press was ripping into her fat shaming and body shaming her for her recent weight gain. Soon after, Haley posted a TikTok where she lip synced to I'm not saying she deserved it, but God's timing is always right. She deleted it shortly after. There was no direct connection between these two events, but Selena's fans accused Haley of posting it to body shame Selena. Selena recently commented on a video speculating about this whole theory saying, I don't let these things get me down. Be nice to everyone. She also commented on several other TikToks shaming Haley. Selena later posted a story on Instagram showing how she accidentally over laminated her eyebrows. Kylie Jenner, less than a day later, posted a story of her eyebrows and then Haley's soon after. Selena fans assumed Kylie was mocking her. Haley has never said anything directly to Selena, but this is the closest it's gotten, so it turned the fire up. Selena's fans' current form of action activism is to follow Selena on Instagram and unfollow Haley and Kylie. Because of this, Selena has overtaken Kylie as the most followed woman on Instagram. Haley has also been accused of being rude at restaurants. In July 2020, a TikTok video was posted by Julia Carolan in which she rated celebrities she served while working at a restaurant in Manhattan. The video has been watched over 3 million times and called out several famous people, including Kylie Jenner, Gigi Hadid and Hailey Bieber. Next up, we have Miss Bieber, she says in the video. This is gonna be controversial. I met her a handful of times, and every time she was never nice, she continued. I really wanna like her, but I have to give her like a 3.5 stars out of 10. Sorry. It seems that Caroline's impression of Justin Bieber's wife was 
far from flattering. Eventually, the bad review got all the way back to the model herself, who reportedly commented on the TikTok, saying, just came across this video and wanted to say sorry if I've ever given you bad vibes or a bad attitude. She continued, that's not ever my intention. Hopefully, she's since changed her ways. Now let's talk about Haley shading Taylor Swift. In 2023, a video of Haley Bieber hosting an episode of Host the Mic in 2018 started circulating online on TikTok. In the clip, Haley made a gagging face when Taylor Swift's album Reputation was mentioned. Understandably, Swift fans were not pleased by Bieber's apparent diss of the pop star. And Selena Gomez enthusiasts apparently took the gesture as an affront to them, too. Somewhat surprisingly, Selena decided to respond to the viral clip of Bieber saying, So sorry, my best friend is and continues to be one of the best in the game. Selena commented on the video, proving she definitely has Taylor's back. But that's not all. The Biebers again hit the headlines in 2023 when another old video recirculated. In this particular clip, Justin impersonates an unforgettable moment involving Taylor in which the cruel summer singer got upset about bananas while on medication following eye surgery. Haley could be heard laughing in the background of the video, leading fans to believe that the Biebers were ruthlessly mocking Taylor once again. Lastly, let's discuss Haley allegedly copying Selena Gomez. As well as being embattled in a number of online feuds with Selena, Haley Bieber has also been accused of copying the only murders in the building star. For instance, Gomez launched her cooking show Selena and Chef on Max in 2020, giving viewers a glimpse inside her own kitchen. In December 2022, Haley launched her own cooking show on YouTube called What's in My Kitchen, which took fans inside her house. As a result, comparison between the two series were quickly made. Tattoos provide further evidence that Haley has copied Selena. Both Bieber and Gomez have G tattoos behind their ears, which is certainly a strange coincidence. In 2015, Refinery29 revealed that Gomez's tattoo was a tribute to her little sister Gracie. Meanwhile, Haley was reportedly one of many celebrities to get a G tattoo behind her ear in tribute to her pastor Chad Veach's daughter Georgia, who lives with a rare brain condition. Whether or not Haley actually decided to copy Gomez is unclear, though it doesn't seem as if fans will stop believing that Justin Bieber's wife is taking notes from his ex, Selena. Jennifer shares more about her past toxic relationships by saying, quote, there were people in my life who said I love you and then didn't do things that were kind of in line with the word love. You have to hit rock bottom where you're in situations that are so uncomfortable and so painful that you finally go, I don't want this anymore. A therapist said to me, what if this was your daughter? What would you do? And it was so clear. She called. I was like, I'd tell her, get out of there and never look back. But for me, it was so clouded and so complicated with so much of my past and my own pain and hurt and dysfunction that I couldn't see clearly. It was like looking through through fog. Jane Fonda had some honest words with Jennifer in the documentary while on a phone call with her. I want you to know that I don't entirely know why, but I feel invested in you and Ben, and I really, really, really want this to work, tells Jen of Ben Affleck on a call filmed for the documentary. However, this is my concern. Like, it feels too much like you're trying to prove something instead of just living it. You know, either every other photograph is kissing and the two of you hugging. Jennifer shrugs it off and laughs, though. That's just us living our life says, but Jane Fonda did have a point, and if Jennifer listened to her, it may have saved her from receiving horrendous reviews online after the after both movies came out. After both movies came out. Some saying the movie musical is the worst movie ever made. One reviewer made a list called The Reasons Why This Sucked. I had no idea what was going on in the movie. There was no theme. Actually, there were too many themes. There were so many talented artists who were used more as props. They should have had bigger roles. This movie seems like an ode to herself for nailing down a man. It's not really about love. It's a movie about conquering a man. It's basically telling everybody that other relationships that her and Ben had were just filler until they could be together again. Her 
Her kids and Ben's kids are going to be watching this. Do they really need to know how much she loves making love to her to their dad? We all know it's not her voice singing those songs, and if it is, auto-tune should get a lot of credit, the reviewer says. The reviewer finishes off by saying she's narcissistic, way too in love with herself, and for people clicking more than two stars, did you actually watch it? Or are you just clicking on five stars because you love this ego maniac? Thoughts in the documentary on former co-star Jane Fonda's phone call saying, Jane is still very protective of her and felt like you're putting yourself out there to get beat up again. Jane Fonda's concerns resurfaced when she thinks about photos of the couple at the Grammy Awards in which Ben Affleck's disinterested expression became the target of memes galore and gossips about and gossip about Jen and gossip about the pair's relationship. I get real scared, you know, with all that about the Grammys and he looks unhappy and I'm like, oh my god, what's happening? Fonda told Jennifer, nothing. Lied. Jennifer Lopez also revealed she got multiple no thank yous from more fellow celebs that she hoped would appear with her in the movie. Taylor Swift, whom Jennifer joined on stage during Taylor's Red Tour 2013, declined, according to today.com. Jason Momoa, Jennifer Coolidge, Lizzo, Vanessa Hudgens, Ariana Grande, and Snoop Dogg also allegedly declined. Khloe Kardashian was another potential celebrity cameo who dropped out. I don't want to force anybody to this who go, it's going to be fine for says in the film. Nobody wants to say no to me, Benny. I get that, she tells her manager, Benny Medina. But when an actor doesn't like a script good enough or is worried about it, that is what they'll say. Jennifer, who ultimately put $20 million of her own money in visual album, also admits in the film that the whole project made her nervous too. People are scared, scared to put out there. I get it, she says. Took me a long time. I'm scared. I don't act like I'm scared. That's the secret to my whole effing career. Looking back on her childhood, Lopez also reveals that she felt very ignored by her dad and that her mother was always the center of attention. She got used to being around people who acted that way. Jen felt emotionally neglected as a child, Ben Affleck says. He continues drawing parallels with her longing for approval and his own past struggles with alcoholism. It's a hard thing to look at somebody whose professional life is wildly successful and who on Instagram looks like they're living the happiest life in the world. The thing you discover is there isn't enough alcohol in all the liquor stores in the world to fill up that thing. In Jennifer's case, I don't think there's enough followers or movies or records or any of that stuff. Part of you still feels a longing and pain. Ultimately, that's the work that you gotta do on your own. Number 10, Cry Me a River. Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake is a very catchy song. It's pretty mean and clearly about Britney, but still very catchy. When the song was first released, Britney was sideswiped. Even though the music video was clearly aimed at Britney, even casting a lookalike to play an unfaithful girlfriend. In The Woman in Me, Britney's new book, she reflected on the plot of the 2002 video, describing it as a woman who looks like her cheats on him and wanders around sad in the rain, which is a pretty solid summation. The media backlash from the video painted Britney as a harlot who had broken the heart of America's golden boy when she was actually comatose in Louisiana and he was happily running around Hollywood. Comatose in Louisiana sounds like the title of a book about a young man trapped in the swamps of Louisiana. I gotta write something down. Britney admitted that she was unfaithful to Justin in a way. She kissed choreographer Wade Robson while she was still dating Timberlake, but following the split in 2002, Justin went public claiming that he would not tell anyone who his songs were actually about, telling people they were self-explanatory. Well, karma came back to bite him when a book about his misdeeds was published and sold out in the first week. Number 9. Oh Baby Baby It should come as no surprise to anyone that Britney Spears is one of the first people I will be talking about today and will talk about a couple of times because she literally wrote about this man in her memoir exposing every little secret that he once held dear. The world now knows that Britney almost had a baby with him but that he encouraged her not to have it, something she went through with and regrets to this day. I have not personally read Britney's memoir yet, however it is on my wish list so we'll see how much terrible stuff there really is inside its pages. One thing that was revealed that is public knowledge is just how much shame Britney felt when Justin released his song Cry Me a River, which I've already talked about. Too bad for Britney, it's pretty catchy. The song was claiming that Britney had cheated on him, but we all know now that it was actually the opposite and he actually cheated on her. The entire argument is only solved when you choose a side, so you be the judge. Number 8. Take Back the Night It would appear that Justin's been too busy bringing stuff back for him to do some basic research. When Justin decided to call his next single Take Back the Night, he had 
had no idea that the same name was already trademarked by a foundation for people affected by physical mistreatment that has been holding emotionally charged campus events since the 1970s. Thankfully, the internet exists and education took place. Justin was forced to release a public statement apologizing for his actions, actions that he really wasn't even aware of. He said upon the release of his new song Take Back the Night, he was made aware of the organization of the same name called Take Back the Night Foundation. He took the opportunity to let everyone know that neither his song nor its lyrics had any association with the organization. As he learned more about the Take Back the Night Foundation, he was moved by their efforts to stop violence against women, create safe communities, and encourage respectful relationships for women, something that we all really should rally around. He hoped that the coincidence would bring more awareness to the cause. His words did not make things instantly better, considering he admitted to not knowing the cause even existed, further showcasing the need to spread the word. The foundation sent Justin a letter claiming that there would be legal action for using their name without permission, something that was eventually settled outside of court. Number 7. Time's Up Sometimes people should really think before they do something, like when Justin and his wife Jessica Beale posted photos of themselves wearing hashtag Time's Up pins on their way to the Golden Globes in 2018. Yes, at the time there was a ton of online presence for the Time's Up movement. Most of the celebrities in attendance at the awards that year were wearing nothing but black and supporting the ants. And the reason people were upset with how Justin did it was because he had just started a project with Woody Allen. For those who may have forgotten, the Time's Up movement was an initiative by women in Hollywood calling for a change in the treatment of women across all industries. Woody Allen is a controversial man because of the 1992 investigation into the concerns that he had physically mistreated his daughter, Dylan Farrow. Woody was never formally charged, but the accusations followed him everywhere he went. This led many people online to call Justin out for the hypocrisy of wearing a pin while working with Woody. Justin was blissfully unaware of the controversy, but he apologized for it anyway. Number six, Vegas. When Justin sat down for an interview with Beats Radio 1, he talked about his new album, Man of the Woods, family life, and his career path. When he was asked about the possibility of taking up residency in Vegas, though, he responded by saying it was something to consider if he ever wanted to retire. He continued saying that it would feel like planning a retirement. For some reason, that was a scary thing for him to think about. A lot of performers have purchased property in Las Vegas, not as a retirement spot, but just as like a home base whenever they're performing for extended periods of times. The comments were considered to be pretty rude, especially to anyone that is not a celebrity living in Las Vegas. And according to Justin, everyone in town is in their retirement stage and therefore are old. He's received a fair share of backlash for the comments, but has yet to actually purchase any property in the town or apologize for them. 